Good evening, and welcome to Mark Power Ministries. Tonight we're going to have chapter 13, part one of Genesis. But before we do that, some of you probably already saw it on Facebook and maybe even YouTube. We have all new equipment we've been trying out and testing, and uh, <laughs> a lot of it got public uh, public broadcasting. So we apologize for that, but we're right on, on tune right now. So let's go to Facebook. Let's go to our In the News, and let's talk about what's happening in the news. Uh, first off is what we want to see is, I'm not really crazy about seeing this picture, but this is the article, Seven Things You Should Know About Count Kamala Harris's Vice President's Pick, Tim Walls. So what in the world was Kamala Harris thinking? There's a reason why the Trump campaign is so giddy right now. Kamala uh, actually bypassed Joe, Josh Shapiro, but instead picked Tom Walls as her vice president running mate. This election is going to be decided by the swing states. We know that already. And the most critical swing state by far is Pennsylvania. Whoever wins Pennsylvania is almost certain to win the presidency. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro has a 61% favorable rating in his state, and so he was seemingly the obvious pick. The following comes from CNN. Pennsylvania, on the other hand, is almost a certain must-win state for Harris if she wants to be president. In fact, it is probably the most important swing state in this cycle, and the polling there has been very tight. Shapiro currently holds, again, a 61% favorable rating in Pennsylvania and outperformed Biden's 2020 baseline by 14 points in 2022. So two word response to Harris's choice of running mate, thank you, Trump wrote in all capital letters. This was an enormous gift to the Trump campaign. So why did Harris pick Shapiro? Well, the truth is that many on the left were deeply concerned that he's Jewish and he has a history of being strongly pro-Israel. Palestinians, this is what he, a quote from him, Palestinians will not coexist peacefully, Shapiro wrote. They do not have the capabilities to establish their own homeland and make it successful, even with the, old, with the aid of Israel and the United States. They are too battle-minded to be able to establish a peaceful homeland of their own. In that article, Shapiro also said he had previously served as a volunteer with the Israeli army. There was apparently concern that having Shapiro on the ticket would cost Harris the state of Michigan if too many Muslims stayed at home and didn't vote. With Waltz on the ticket, that isn't likely to be an issue. But if Harris doesn't win Pennsylvania, there's probably no path for her to victory. Of course, there is no going back now. Harris has made her choice, and everyone's going to have to live with it. But let me give you seven things that you should know about Tim Walls. Number one, in 2020, Walls presided over the BLM riots that resulted in large proportions of Minneapolis being burned to the ground. He did absolutely nothing for three days, and he let it, he let it burn. Number two, Minnesota became a sanctuary state under Waltz, and he has made sure that migrants are eligible for all sorts of free goodies. Number three, Minnesota also became a trans-refuge state. Tim Waltz transformed Minnesota to a trans-refuge state, signing legislation to protect gender-affirming care and providing tampons in boys' bathrooms at school. Actually, they're calling him Tampon Tim. Number four, the bill that Waltz signed into law in April 2023 also allows Minnesota and their authorities that take children from any parents that try to prevent their kids from getting sex change surgeries. Number five is, be, is being alleged that Walls uh, quit the National Guard after he learned that his unit would be deployed to Iraq, embellishing his military career and abandoning his National Guard battalion, highlighting that the now vice president presidential pick for the Democrats never served in combat and retired from service ahead of his unit's 2005 deployment to Iraq. Number six, many people don't realize this, but Walls actually considers himself to be a Lutheran. He sometimes describes himself as a Minnesota Lutheran because we're good Minnesota Lutherans. We have a rule that if you, and he's going back and forth with this, but he said this, we have a rule that if you do something good and talk about it, it no longer counts. Walls joked during a speech last, last spring. So what do you have to do to, is to get someone else, he said, to talk about you. Number seven, it turns out that Walls has a very long history of being close to China. Straight after college, through a program set up by Harvard University and taught in Guangdong, Providence, shortly after the Tiananmen Square massacre in Beijing in, 18, in 1989. He would later honeymoon in China with his wife, Gwen, and bringing a group of 60 young people with them. Not sure why you bring people to, on your honeymoon, but he did. Walls has been to China dozens of times. He says 31 and uh, including trade missions, and has called his experiences there truly amazing. The Harris-Waltz ticket is the most liberal presidential ticket that we have ever seen. 
I don't think this is a smart move by the Democrats, but we will see what happens. So let's go on and tell you a little bit more about in the news and, and what's happening there. So as we see in Israel, this is there. Media bias will not change preparing for the coming Middle East PR war. So what we see here is something that's going on pretty, uh, pretty uh, open. War with the Hezbollah and Iran is as predictable as a confrontation with Hamas. And so let me lay out what we know about what will happen. The media will do these things. They will ignore Israeli casualties and focus on Arab victims. They will accept fabricated Arab statistics. They will interview unreliable Arab sources. They will focus on dramatic photos and stories without context. And they will fail to explain Hezbollah's dictates and what can be reported. Once a full-scale war with Hezbollah does break out, we know Israel will be accused of disproportionately provoking a refugee and humanitarian crisis, denying health care, and committing massacres and genocide. Israelis will be charged by the media with being aggressors, and they'll be no doubt compared to Nazis. The usual epithets uh, unrelated to the war will be tossed around, such as comparing Israel to South Africa and accusing it of settler co colonialism. The conflict must be explained in simple terms without trying to give a history lesson. Israel is fighting for its very existence. The people of Israel do want peace. Israel is the only democratic uh, democracy in the Middle East. It shares American values. It shares American interests. The war is not with the people, but with the leaders whose radical Islamic views threaten America also. Publicize what leaders of Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran have to say. October 7th, Israel had emotion on its side, but lost momentum as the months passed. It's vital to keep the stories of the hostages and the victims at the forefront. There's been no honest discussion of the hardships of the citizens of the North, the victims of Hezbollah strikes or the damage to property, agriculture, and environment. I talked to a friend this week from Israel uh, who lives in Tiberias. 70,000 refugees have come from the Golan, Jews, and they are now living in the hotels around Tiberias. The media's bias will not change. We must operate with what that is a given rather than expect it to change. Criticism of Israel in the com coming battle is predictable, and there is no excuse to be caught unprepared again. As we continue to give you in the news, let's go a little further and show you some other things that are happening. This one's under war. 99 illegal aliens on terrorist watch list uh, released into the United States, a report is telling us. So, under the Biden-Harris administration, at least 99 illegal aliens on America's terrorist watch list have been released into the general public in America, according to a congressional report. As if the record-breaking number of border encounters of illegal aliens on the terrorist watch list is not concerning enough, the Biden-Harris administration have released some of the aliens into the interior of the United States. From the start of fiscal year 2021 through the end of fiscal 2023, the Border Patrol says it encountered 282 illegal aliens on the terrorist watch group between ports of entry at the southern border. Since the start of fiscal 2024, on October 1st, the Border Patrol has encountered an additional 93 foreign nationals on the terrorist watch list along the border. The terrorist watch list includes individuals who represent a potential threat to the United States, including known affiliates of watch listed individuals. In July, for example, Border Patrol agents arrested three Palestinian illegal immigrants after the discovery of their possible ties to terrorist organizations. In June, the Department of Homeland Security identified over 400 illegal aliens as concerns because they were brought to the United States through an ISIS-affiliated human smuggling network. 150 of them reportedly have been arrested. The, lo the locations of the others is right now not known. Also in June, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement arrested eight illegal aliens from Tajikistan after we discovered that they had possible ties to ISIS, a terrorist group. The eight have been released into the United States. The release of illegal aliens with ties to ISIS highlights a theme of the House Judiciary Committee's report. The report details issues related to the lack of information sharing with immigration judges. In February, authorities arrested Afghan national Muhammad Carwin, who is on the terrorist watch list after he spent almost a year absolutely free in the U.S. But in March 2024, an immigration judge released Carwin because the judge wasn't told that the man was a security threat and part of a radical group 
designated by the U.S. as a terrorist organization. Totally whacked out. Listen, the Carwin case also illustrates how immigration judges who hear immigration cases and can determine whether an alien should be detained or not are ill-equipped to handle national security-related cases. The committee reports concludes. That lack of information, report says, also may explain why immigration judges granted bond to at least 27 watch-listed aliens. The Border Patrol has also encountered thousands of illegal aliens since October from nations that could pose and will pose a security threat to the United States. So listen to the numbers. As of June, fiscal year 2024, Border Patrol nationwide has encountered 2,134 Afghan nationals, 33,347 Chinese nationals. The China is stalking America with young men, young Chinese men. There's something going on. And I'm, I'm sure that you can read between the lines. Should something happen with China, I believe these men will strike. We know that there was 541 Iranian nationals, 520 Syrian nationals, 3,104 Uzbekian nationals. These encounters also include 1,260 illegal aliens from Russia, 752 from Kazakhstan, 734 from Pakistan, 704 from Somalia, 433 from Kazakhstan, 120 from Yemen, 62 from Lebanon. The Biden-Harris administration continues to prioritize illegal aliens, including hundreds upon hundreds on the terrorist watch list and many, many more terrorist sympathizing countries over the safety and security of the American people. The report concludes, of course they do. Their motto should be is um, illegal terrorists first, America last. Let's continue on and tell you a little bit more of what's going on here. So as we see, we will go here also when we talk about war. The report, this report finds the U.S. military woefully unprepared for the next major conflict. We are closer today to World War III than we've been since the Second World War, said former President Donald Trump at the Believer Summit in West Palm Beach on July 20, 26th. So what's going on here? The form, the tr Trump, was it a Trump hyperbole? Absolutely not. The former president is not alone in his thinking. China and Russia's No Limit Partnership was formed in February of 2022. That partner, they also have a partnership with Iran and North Korea, each of which represents its own significant threats to the United States' interests. States the Commission on the National Defense Strategy in its 114-page report released three days after Trump spoke. Not only is global conflict on the horizon, the Commission's report reveals America is woefully unprepared for what is about to come. Take the Department of Defense, for instance. The Commission finds that the DOD business practices, Byzantine research, and development and procurement systems, reliance on decades-old military hardware, and culture of risk avoidance reflect an era of uncontested military dominance. We are weaker than ever. The report is yet another stark reminder of the U.S. government's failure to both anticipate the militaristic rise of the communist China, as well as to prepare our, prepare our nation to deter, let alone defeat, such a threat. Fennell, a U.S. Navy captain who served as Director of Intelligence and Information Operations at the U.S. Pacific Fleet, recommends Congress take, quote, immediate and massive action now to rebuild the armed forces, especially the U.S. Navy. The problem in the U.S. military goes way beyond a shortage of modern ships and planes and weapons. However, uh, the root of the Department of Air Force's trouble is cultural. The department usual laser focus on mission has been supplanted by a Marxist-inspired instructions and an eradication of med mediocrity in favor of diversity, equity, and inclusion promotion programs with an extra emphasis placed on administrative fetishes like climate change. The Chinese, Russian, North Korea, and Iranian militaries are not burdened by such, by such nonsense. We should know that. Russian Vla President Vladimir Putin's threats to use nuclear weapons are absolutely real. In August of last year, at a private event for Democratic Party donors in Salt Lake City, Utah, he called China a ticking time bomb. Uh, a bipartisan call to arms is urgently needed so that the United States can make major changes and significant investments now rather than wait for the next Pearl Harbor or 9-11. General Mike Minohan, the chief of the Air Force's Air Mobility Command, predicted in a memorandum 
to his command leaked in January of last year that America would be in war with China, and I'm quoting this, in 2025. Chinese state enterprises are forming military and militia units, and the Communist Party has taken over privately owned factories to turn out items for the military. Xi Jinping can see the United States is starting to stir. Why would he wait for his foe to get ready? It is incomprehensible that the United States after the Cold War would allow militant regimes to develop stronger fighting forces than our own. But that's exactly what is happening right now. Let's go a little further down here in the news and give you a couple more items. This one's under moral decay. U.S. women's soccer team silences politically incorrect Christian player. Even though it's under moral decay, I also want to put it under good news in a sense. So as we look at it and as we study it and see what's going on, let's just really look at it. It's a new era for the U.S. women's soccer team. Or is it? For years, the U.S.'s women's soccer team has been seen as a bastion of wokeness, perhaps the most famously when Megan Rapinoe fuel, uh, feuded then with President Donald Trump. But one new player suggests the teams finally might be getting some ideological diversity. Corbin Albert, a 20-year-old picked to be midfielder for the women's team for the Paris Olympics, is no Rapinoe, who is infamously for her, infamous for her publicizing her woke views. On her Instagram account, Albert's bio claims, listen to this, Jesus is king, using the crown emoji. Her main photo shows her with an American flag, and one of her pinned posts shows her and another young woman dressed in patriotic colors, holding up cowboy boots, and has the caption, dreamed in red, white, and blue. When Albert scored her winning goal, NBC commentator Joe Champion highlighted the controversy surrounding her. For the, the all the pre-tournament controversy that surrounded her, her teammates rushed to her to her to share a memorable moment. He's not the only media figure to slap the controversial label on Albert. The Associated Press reported in April about a controversy over midfielder Corbin Albert's social media posts. New York Post headlined a June article, Contro Controversial US WNT star Corbin Albert named to Olympic team. USA Today dutifully noted, Albert became the center of controversy in March. So what exactly did this young woman do? Well, the word controversy became glued to her when it emerged that Albert was a, was a born again Christian and had Christian beliefs. Albert also posted a video during the 2023 4th of July weekend on TikTok, showing her family taking turns stating that their pronouns are USA. The stalker, stalker star reported also shared a video on social media of a person seemingly in a church wearing a Jesus Wins shirt, discussing with regret how he had pursued same-sex attractions in the transgender lifestyle. For years, players in the U.S. women's soccer team have been openly political. Just to recap, Rapinoe refused to stand for the playing of the national anthem, citing solidarity with former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick. She said she would never go to the White House and feuded with Trump and argued for the inclusion of trans players in women's sports. A curious stance given that the U.S. women's soccer team lost to a high school boys in a 2017 scrimmage. But she's gay, and she's open about it. And when she was required to stand in her later years for the national anthem, she refused to sing along or put her hand on her heart. The message is clear. There's no room in the U.S. women's so national soccer team for anyone who espouses different views than on LGBTQ plus matters. Albert has never been accused of targeting any teammate or say saying something to any individual deemed offensive. There's no suggestion that she was ever less than professional and polite to her fellow soccer players, but she dared to think for herself. And that can't be allowed, apparently. More than half of Americans think it's morally wrong to change your gender, according to a June Gallup poll. A third of Americans believe that gay and lesbian relationships are morally wrong, according to a May Gallup poll. Albert's views, if indeed the social media views did reflect her views, might not be popular among female soccer players, but they are, they are well within the mainstream of American thought. Soccer is the third most popular sport for female high school athletes. In 2022-2023 high school year, more than 375,000 high school girls played soccer. Do they all have to become leftists or at least take a vow of silence on their politically incorrect beliefs if they want to play in the Olympics someday? This is the state that we're in. And thank God that she's there and having a Christian view. And let me give you one last look. Well, actually, I think there's two last in the news that I want to give you. And let me show you this. Planet Earth. 
earthquakes. You've heard me talk about them before. Of course, you've heard Jesus talk about them in the Gospels. Seismic buildup? Question mark. Unusual amounts of earthquake, earthquakes are shaking the entire nation. It's getting very difficult to ignore all of the shaking that's going on. Over the past few months, there have been very unusual earthquakes all over the United, Sp United States in many different spots, not normal spots. Jesus said you'd have earthquakes in diverse places, different spots. Note noteworthy quakes on the west coast, on the east coast, near our northern border, the entire near our southern border. The entire planet is being shaken by unusual seismic activity. Is all of this unusual seismic activity building up to something? If so, what does it mean for all of us? On Tuesday night, a magnitude of 5.9 earthquake that shook Southern California made headlines all over the nation. The U.S. Geological Survey said that the magnitude tremor struck at 9.09 p.m. and was centered near Mettler, an unincorporated area in Kern County, about 85 miles from downtown Los Angeles. There isn't a known fault in the area anywhere, and the earthquake struck on that Tuesday night, diverse. The shaking was felt over a very large area. In fact, it was being reported that this earthquake was felt by those living in Ventura, Simi Valley, Camarillo, Santa Clara, Fascino, Hollywood, Santa Monica, Northern Hollywood, and Woodland Hills. Subsequently, there's been more than 200 aftershocks or quakes in that same area, 277 to be exact. Hopefully, things will settle down soon, but it's just a matter of time before earthquakes return. Scientists assure us, and we've heard it for a long time, that the big one is way overdue, and the damage that will cause will be off the charts. California is known for earthquakes, but we're also seeing significant shaking in areas of the country that are not known for earthquakes. For example, the state of New Jersey has been shaken by two, more than 200 earthquakes over the past three months. I lived in Pennsylvania for a long time. Never did I hear of an earthquake in New Jersey. It's not known for being a hot spot for earthquakes. The New Jersey has been rattled by more than 200 tremors in the past in the past three months. In the middle of the country, a magnitude 3.0 earthquake was just recorded directly under Lake Michigan, which was felt by many in Wisconsin. Bizarre earthquake registered 3.0 on the Richter scale and was reportedly felt by many near Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Well, we want to keep a very close eye on seismic activity around the Great Lakes because it could have been very serious implications for a city that's messed up called Chicago at some point in the future. Meanwhile, so many earthquakes have been happening in one county in Texas that a state emergency was formally declared. Of course, there are lots of other reasons why so many people are feverishly preparing for the perfect storm that is now upon us. People are afraid of earthquakes. They're starting to prep for them, but they're prepping for other things also. Global events are starting to spin out of control. And as we can see what's happening in these global events, we know that it's not very good. We know that things are happening, uh, like CNN article that says, discuss the fact that many among the elite are now constructing, constructing 21 century, 21st century fortressing or bunkers. Few things I'm reading from it. Few things appear to smooth these existential anxieties of the super rich, like a bunker designed to withstand anything short of total nuclear Armageddon. Yet it's no longer enough for the security conscious billionaire to stick an impenetrable safe room in the basement of his house, where it might sit empty forever. In today's Uber Prime properties, Bunkers have gone seriously upmarket and high tech in some cases, growing to the extent that the whole homes are becoming 21st century fortresses. Al Corby, who has been at the forefront of security luxury for 50 years as the president and founder of Strategically Armed and Fortified Environments, acronym SAFE, based in Virginia in the US, says this, if you're going to be able to survive underground, we want you to be having fun and be in luxury. Do you think that those elitists are going too far? I don't. We've entered a time of tremendous political chaos, global war, worldwide feud shortages, deadly pestilences, and historic national disasters. If you're wise, you'll be working extremely hard to get prepared for what's coming. I have one last one I want to give you, and it's also under the planet category today. This is on May 30th, 2023. NASA posted what has become and believed for 20 years now, quote, one third of the Milky Way's common stars could harbor or do harbor life on them. That's a pretty good statement, pretty powerful, saying that a third of the star, Milky Way has billions of stars, could hold life. Now, I've always said that there's no way that could be that. 
because if there is sentient life out there, scripture says that Jesus died once and for all. He would have had to die on other planets that had life. And the word also said he was crucified before the foundation of our world. Emphasis, our. Ah, but Pastor Mark in the Bible may be proven right after all by NASA itself. This came out just about a, two days ago. Planets of Milky Way's most common stars are less habitable than thought. Dead NASA telescope reveals. You've got to love scientists. They, when they, they usually find out what the Bible has to say to be true, like about 2,000 years after the biblical writings. It's my good news tonight. That is in the news. We are going to...